Hello. <laughs> My name is Eric. I work at Parker Dam State Park in Clearfield County, Pennsylvania. And I'm here today to talk about some of the basics of cross-country skiing. Uh, this session is about your basic parallel stride, which is how to ski forward. Uh, there's some other details that go with that too, but uh, let's get started. First of all, getting into your skis sometimes can be difficult. Because your feet are far away from your face, sometimes it's hard to see what's going on down here at the tips of your toes. With your N and N bindings, you're taking that little pin right there and you are clicking it down into your binding. Sometimes as you're hiking out here and you're walking along, you get a lot of snow packed in that pin which makes it difficult to put into the ski. So a lot of times you'll see people doing this thing. That's basically getting the ice clumps out of their bindings so that they can actually put the skis on and walk in. And you'll hear them walk in, they will click. If you don't hear the click, you might be walking and leaving your skis behind. Click and click. Yay! All right. One of the first things that we teach folks to do um, <laughs> when we're teaching this is to march on their skis. You put skis on, you have them on level ground. You don't want to be pointing down a hill or up a hill. You want to be fairly level so they're not going anywhere. We do allow folks to use their poles a little bit, sometimes not, depends on how things are going. Um, but basically, we have people just march on their skis. It might seem like a silly thing, but some people are reluctant to pick up a foot, and that's kind of important because you need to put all your weight onto one ski to be able to push to go forward. So marching on your skis gets folks used to shifting their weight on one foot and the other. All right. Remembering that that pattern on the bottom of the ski right here is going to be what gives you the grip to push forward and go. Um, that's how this is going to work. <clears throat> if you've ever been on a freshly waxed floor just with your socks on, it's kind of fun. You run and slide. Well, that's part of the fun of cross-country skiing, too, is that push and slide, glide part. A lot of folks, when they're learning how to do it, don't get the slide. They're afraid to slide. That scares them because their balance is off and so on. But honestly, that's the fun part. And once you get that, it's like riding a bike. It's fun. So what you're going to do is put all your weight onto one ski and kind of slide that next one forward. Okay, so I want to say just try that, but I'm not talking to anybody who's in skis unless you're on a smartphone. When you put your weight onto that one foot and slide forward, then you need to transfer your weight to both so that you're sliding and gliding. Now, I'm going to try and demonstrate that going across so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to demonstrate the uh, kick and glide, and I'm going to move a little further away so we can actually get this in the view. But what you're going to be doing is pushing off on that one foot and then waiting. Pushing off on the other foot and waiting. Okay, the waiting part is kind of important. Um, that's where you get the kick and the glide. If you're not doing the glide, if you're just doing this, That's called walking on skis. That's not skiing. So again, what you want to do is kick and glide. Kick and glide. Oh, wait, wait, I'm coming back. Kick and glide. Kick and glide. Kick. Sometimes it helps if you throw a song in your head. You guys know the song, This Old Man? Check it out. This old man, he played one, he played knick-knack on my thumb. This old man, he played one, he played knick-knack on my thumb. You get the idea. All right. 
Doing the kick and glide thing, if you are going across level ground, just use that this old man cadence and go along. What do you do with your arms? Do what comes naturally. Just let them go along with your stride. You'll figure it out. Um, if you're doing a slight downhill, you'll find that your glide goes a lot longer. So you can sing slower or just kind of push and hold that until your glide starts to slow down. Um, if you're in a position where your legs are tired from doing that kick and glide, what you can do is called a double pull, which is basically you're using both your poles to push and you're not even using your legs to drive. Double pulling works good on slight downhills or if your legs need a rest. I'm gonna demonstrate a long kick and glide. I'm gonna come down through here. Long glide, long glide, lots of fun. Double pulling. All right, so you're skiing, and with traditional skis, they tend to go straight. How do you turn while you're skiing? Downhill skis, you can do the snow plow and just shift your weight around, but cross-country skis, you have to do something a little different, and that is called uh, a step turn. As you're skiing along, what you wanna do is use the technique of the outside star, which is point your toe up and step off while you're skiing. I'm going to demonstrate that here down through the field. Cross country skiing etiquette. Uh, sometimes trails are set up to be one direction. And if it is a one direction trail, then you need to follow that direction so that you're not coming into conflict with someone else. Um, if you stop along the trail, then step out of the track so that others that are coming up the trail don't need to stop or try and go around you on something that doesn't have track set. Uh, if you are approaching someone from the rear and they're moving slower, the, the common etiquette is to say track or behind or hop or something to that effect to let them know that you're back there so that they can step off the trail and allow you to pass through. Some skiers though don't know what that means and if they don't get off the track or out of your way then go around them safely. Um, be considerate of others. Um, if someone is coming downhill and you're going uphill step off the track and out of the way. Just be respectful of all the other users. It goes a long way. You know, you're out there having fun, right? Act like it. Some things to avoid. Um, if you're skiing along and you come to an area with no snow, what you want to do is stop skiing and kind of walk your skis through it. Don't slide your skis because if there's any rocks or stones, it'll scratch up the bottom of your skis. Or you can simply take off your skis and walk across and put them back on. Similarly, if you come across a wet area, you don't want to ski into that, especially if it's cold, because the bottoms of your skis will ice up and you're not going to be going anywhere until you get them cleaned off. What I'm doing here is kind of getting the snow off the bottom of my skis and off the top of my skis to allow that pattern to work. Sometimes as snow conditions change, um, that snow can start sticking to the bottom of your ski and uh, it's no fun when conditions are like that. If you're trying to ski and it's just a little too warm and snow's sticking, just hang it up and wait for a colder day. So practice these cross-country skiing skills until you get good. Um, practice, practice, practice until you get that glide thing down. That's where the fun comes in. Hopefully we'll get some more winter soon and we all can go play in the snow. My preferred method is cross-country skiing. Hey, I should go get my skis on. <laughs>